This is how to use AI within SketchUp to elevate your design experience. Look closely because many designers are embracing this transformative technology and the results are nothing short of groundbreaking. But what are these techniques that they know that we don't and we need to figure it out? Good news for us, it's quite simple and the process follows a couple steps, so let's get started. Don't forget to subscribe, it would mean so much to me. We are using generative AI with diffusion inside of SketchUp from SketchUp Labs. This extension has the ability to take a basic SketchUp model with simple geometry and turn it into renderings or iterations of different designs, materials, and context. The extension is called SketchUp Diffusion, which is available in the extension warehouse. I will leave a link in the description box for you to download and try it out. It's free and installs like a regular extension, but it needs the recent version of SketchUp for desktop and it does have to install in a fully licensed version of SketchUp. Once it's installed, click on it and that's gonna bring up a window. This is the entire extension, so it's quite a straightforward and easy to use tool. Quickly go through the user interface interface. We have the text prompt where I can instruct Diffusion on how to transform the image. SketchUp will send the current screen image to Diffusion, applies the entered prompt, and generates a new picture. Style Presets provides me with a range of fundamental styles that I can use to enhance my AI rendering. Whether I want to view it as a clay model, watercolor, illustration, or a photograph, these styles overlay on top of my existing prompt, introducing a fresh look to the image. I can add the renderings as a scene to my model or export them as an image. Right, so let's test this out. You can see here in the window the view is going to capture, so let's rotate it to get a good angle. That's a very simple massive model, looks like a house or a cabin. It has some indications of windows, doors and maybe a balcony, but it's very simple, no materials, just basic geometry. Then let's write a prompt, something like a modern timber cabin in the forest with a view of a lake in the background. That should be enough and let's hit generate. As I said, the extension is taking a screenshot, sending it to Diffusion. Diffusion is going to generate a few options and that will come up here. Okay, so I have a few different options that I could go with. This one is actually very nice. And if you've ever used Diffusion or AI, you know that there's an iterative process of fine tuning the prompt. So I'm going to select the third image and I'm going to fine tune the prompt. That's going to generate a new image based on this picture instead of the original model and geometry. Maybe add in a dining table to the right and maybe a deer to the left. So let's see how it turns out. Okay, so we've got three more options. It doesn't look exactly like how I pictured, but you get the point. I really like these two, so I'm gonna add them as scenes. It's pretty cool when you see how the rendering actually works and follows the lines of your model, because not every AI does that. So let's start from scratch and maybe try something else. I'm gonna refresh the view. <laughs> okay, it crashed. I mean, it's still a new extension, so I'm sure this is just a bug. Yeah, okay now, it's refreshing, we're all good. In these settings, we can use these sliders to decide how much we care about the shape or geometry of our design and the prompt. Because this is a simple concept model, I don't have to worry too much about sticking exactly to the original geometry, and I can let Diffusion be more creative with the prompt. On the other hand, if the design is more finished, like a completed building, I might want to stick more closely to the original geometry. So you can choose if you want to lean closer to the prompt or the geometry, because by playing around with these slides, you can get very different results and that's the beauty of generative AI. So let's try our prompt again, leaning closer to the prompt and less on the geometry. We've got one that looks similar but the fenestrations are different. This one is really different and this one again looks similar but the fenestrations are a little different. Okay, so let's try the style presets. We've got exterior, interior photographs, aerial, pencil sketch, watercolor, illustration, clay, and physical model. I mean these are very good fundamental styles and I'm sure they're gonna add a few more as they develop this extension. Let's try illustration. You can see here at the top how it added more prompts to get the style of illustration. If there's a style that you want that's not in the style's presets, you can study these prompts and create your own style.
Wow, okay, that's interesting. Not what I was expecting, but they're actually really good. Let's try the clay model style. Okay, I like these a lot actually. Okay, one more style because honestly I can sit here and play with this the whole day. Gonna refresh so that we start with the original geometry. These are pretty cool, I'm not gonna lie. This is actually so helpful if you want to study how to create watercolor renderings. You can see how it looks for your design and then try to replicate it. Let's export this image and this is how it looks. You cannot tell me this does not look good. It's got a decent resolution and dimension because this is just a concept rendering. With any AI, you should always consider it as a starting point and it's never a finalized product. And always disclose if you've used AI for any of your images. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you found this video helpful. I'm Rasha Shururu and I will see you next time.